want to rub it in, but ha ha, neener neener, we got to go to Phoenix Comic Con. And we're going to tell you why that makes us cooler than you. The power of Will Smith compels you to revive Shyamalama Ding Dong's directing career? And we ask the burning question, how do you spend your crowdfunding money? That's all coming up on today's Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Slice of Sci-Fi.com And greetings, everyone, to another slice of sci-fi. I am Michael R. Menengay, and it's all kinds of fun in here. I'm Noah Richman. This is not a red ruby slipper. (laughs) (laughs) I'm only a friend of Dorothy's. That bitch has got that shoe. I'm Ben Raginton. Hi, this is a fantastic shoe by United Nude that I got at the KDV in Berlin, and it's been so long since we've had the magic shoe time here, I thought I would share. That is I'm an Sam awesome Roberts, shoe. and this makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Keith Lane, and I only have a pair of deck shoes on. <laughs> I'm Megan Zier. I don't even have shoes on. Woohoo! That's Rebel. how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the, I, the, the, shoe, the shoe bit's awesome. By the way, guys, that's that's great. Uh, I'm I, I, we're, we're here for the movie. There's news. All, there's feedback. News, there's news, things feedback, to do. Talk about things and all kinds of stuff. Let's get some news. Your news team is next. Yeah. Phoenix Comic Con. In case yes. you live yes. under a nerd rock, you may not know. Phoenix Comic Con happened <laughs> this last weekend. I love my nerd weekend. rock. No. <laughs> and it was awesome. As Aww. usual. Oh, we had the greatest time. It was packed to the gills with people. Ugh, lots and lots of people. Lots of great costumes. There was some really great cosplay. We saw some really great vendors when we were there, uh, including 68zombie.com. Yep. We, I thought they were terrific, and uh, there was it was a beautiful Lego display yeah. oh, that, that we great. saw. It was great. That was it was uh, it was all very Star Warsy, and they had this little Mos Eisley cantina set up in the corner mm-hmm. of the hall, which was really which, terrific. Which I could not get my niece to pose with Greedo. No, I don't know no. why she wouldn't do really? it. Really? Oh, so mad because Greedo oh. shot first. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's a good reason. They had a setup where they had a little those Nerf guns that shoot the Nerf darts, and they were letting kids shoot at a couple of stormtroopers. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yep. That was fun. Yeah. Did you and see? Did you see Darth Elvis? Yeah. Oh yeah, Darth <laughs> Elvis. No. I, I have yeah. a photo of him. <gasps> Darth I Elvis. Yeah. Darth Elvis. Yeah, he had the the the, the very sequency white outfit That's with the, the black helmet. Yeah, it was terrific. And uh, I even had a I had a strange little encounter with an old enemy of the Doctor's. Ooh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Here we go. Lead into uh, that. Ben I'm here at Phoenix Comic Con. I'm a size of sci-fi, of course, and. A TARDIS. Could this be any cooler? Of course, being the Doctor Who nerd that I am, I love TARDIS. I had to come and see this, and there's something coming. Here I identify. Okay. You will be exterminated. A Dalek. I wasn't expecting this. Um. Okay. And which Dalek? I mean, are you like a, a cult of Scaro Dalek? Uh, are you the Emperor? Not Emperor Dalek, but you. You're pretty gold, so I'd imagine you're a pretty important Dalek. Well, the Dalek certainly gave me a slap down, but actually, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Man. It was it was really great. We were we were just uh, we got into the exhibit hall kind of early, so we were just wandering around. And we saw the doll like just moving around. Yeah. I think the operator he was just kind of you know making sure that the motors worked. And so he said, yeah, can we get an interview? And he says, well, hang on. You really want to talk to this guy. His name is <laughs> Nigel because he's the Brit. And he says, you need, when you're having a, a Dalek voice, it's got to be British. Mm-hmm. So we talked to him for a little bit. And he was the one who actually built it and had got a little speech synthesizer in there. And all they do is they just do con circuits. That's impressive. Yeah. It, it's it an pretty impressive cool. construction. It's pretty cool. It's ve- it was yeah. very well done. I was, it, was, it was just kind of far out. I mean, it's hard to see in the video, but it did look that impressive when it was up. Close. Yes, oh, it really yeah. does. It really, it really does. did. Yeah. And it's all it's all controlled by remote. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's got uh, a head gear all on him and, and a remote control device, you know, like you would for an RC car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just really well done. Now you have a whole interview with this guy, right? It, it yep. did. Yeah, because uh, right after that, um, 
he comes on and I talked to him a little bit about the construction of the Dalek, how long it took him, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, we, and you can find that on sliceofsci-fi.tv and on YouTube if you just look up sliceofsci-fi.com. There There's you a, go. a lot of cool videos yeah, from Comic-Con. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, all this stuff is available on sliceofsci-fi.tv. It is definitely available on our YouTube channel if you want to check Yeah, just there. look up Slice of Sci-Fi and you, you should find Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And go to our Facebook page because there's okay. really a lot of really great stuff there. Um, and, and a lot of the things that we were doing at the con or you guys were doing at the con is posted there and uh, available for you to uh, check yeah. out. And yeah. we should have photos later. Something this week for too. comic uh, comic book uh, people. We've got mm-hmm. uh, zombie people. Yeah, we, we zombie. really com. covered a lot of grounds. Yep. A yeah. lot of grounds, yeah. including um, one of my favorites was Fezorama. Yeah, that was great. That place was yeah, the bomb. Yeah, and they were really great, and they even have some Cthulhu fezzes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. they were awesome. <laughs> if they hadn't been $65, we would Yeah, been really? Yeah. Are, are wow. We, are we going to say anything about the guest lineup? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we should. Yeah, there's the Babylon 5 panel, John oh, Barrowman. The B5 panel, got to admit. Epic. You know, as much as it would have been nice to have our Vorl on there, it really was terrific. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really was really, was really powerful. Uh, very emotional. Um and also very funny. And very, oh, very funny. Like both, Jerry, a nice mix of both. Yeah, it was a really good mix of both, and Jerry Doyle is hysterical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I wouldn't guy's right. know, because I showed up for the Booster Gold panel. Now, what <laughs> happened there? <sighs> I have no idea what happened. What happened is a bunch of Booster Boosters showed up, and we're sitting there. We're booster like, Boosters? That's what I'm going to call them, because ah! they're Booster Boosters. That's brilliant. <laughs> and so people just, the panel was called In Defense of Booster right. Gold. Right, and they had another one that was in de- Defense of Hawkeye. I didn't go to that one, though. Yeah. But, yeah... Then nobody showed up to defend Booster. But, so, sad. The, but no, so, so how sad. many people were in the room? Um, it had a big room, but it was probably much bigger than it needed to be. But still, there were quite a few of us there. I mean, fifteen maybe, fifteen or uh, fifteen or twenty, which is kind of a lot of people. It's not bad. Yeah. It's actually a lot bigger turnout than I expected. Yeah, there was a so whole. So you had your own panel. Week. <laughs> I no, we should have. You should have jumped up there. I, yeah, and took, took I it over. You, know, you should have hijacked that's what it. Was it. Supposed to be. That's yeah. the way to do it. <laughs> I know. If I was a little more assertive, I could have gone up there and been like, "All right, let's oh, defend him now." Absolutely, you had a perfect <laughs> opportunity. Yeah, right there. you would have had yeah. the floor. Yeah. You, and you, you could have really pleaded your case yeah. at that point. Or so, I could have played so. devil's advocate and been like, "Booster Gold sucks. Defend him." <laughs> 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 that would have been good. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah so, and, and, so did you wander off to another panel, or did you just? Uh, you know, I was just so disappointed that yeah. I'm like, the bo- I think the Babylon 5 one, by the time I gave up on Booster, had already started. So I didn't want to sit in one of the overflow rooms. So I'm just like, somebody will tell me about it later. Yeah. I just walked oh, around. The, the well, it's on YouTube, both. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. It's, two parts. And yeah. it's really worth seeing. The John Barrowman yeah. panel on Sunday was oh my oh God. hilariously funny. Very he, over the top. Oh, very, oh, very, very, very naughty. Very naughty. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> naughty. He did this whole reenactment of kissing um, uh, James Marston's uh, from um, uh, an episode of Torchwood, and uh, it, I, I couldn't even begin to reenact it, but it, <laughs> it was a riot. I mean, I, I began to do the wheezing laugh. Yeah, awesome. It I did. I met my people. I I had my picture taken with a, a sand sand person from Star Wars. Really? Yes. Yay. It was like coming home. Awesome. Yeah. They speak your language. <laughs> yeah, right on. Well, the the other thing I'll say about uh, Phoenix Comic Con uh, the. Um, they have an entire floor of the Hyatt, and it's just an entire floor of tabletop gaming. Oh, right. I, I spent pretty much Friday and Saturday hitting the bars and tabletop gaming, gaming for awesome. like wow. almost yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's <laughs> cool. very cool. Nice. All right. All right. Well, if you missed it, you missed it. But missed you know it. what? You can catch up. Uh, check uh, check us out on our, our our pages and and follow us on Facebook and so forth, and you'll be able to experience it after the con. There no kidding. Go. Well, this weekend sees the release of After Earth. This is a movie we've all been kind of looking forward to. It looks really good in spite of the fact that it's directed by M. Night Shamalama Ding Dong. Right? Yep. And the teller is that they don't really mention his name in the commercials. No. <laughs> yeah. Everybody why. knows he's had so many stinkers. Exactly. Right. I mean, his name, it, it has a, a mm. bad, bad leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. Mm, mine so, especially, yes. So yeah. everybody was really pushing the fact that this was a story that was actually written by Will Smith to really uh, give to his son, Jaden. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, apparently it didn't do too well. Uh, the morning the Hollywood Reporter bashed after Earth with their bottom line, the disappointing sci-fi survival tale does little with its substantial resources. Mm. The New York Daily News coughed up, uh, summer 2013 has its first bomb. 
Ooh. And it landed right on Will Smith. Ooh. And that yeah. really kind of hurts because I thought Will was going to turn in a very atypical performance and that this movie was going to really be about Jaden. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. It still seems kind of really sad. I mean, good story, bad wow. story. You know, you know the the trailer looked really good. The trailer did look good. I have to admit. In fact, we have that right now. Let's yeah, let's take a look. let's watch it. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. Crash landed. Two confirmed survivors. No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship. Approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Are we going to die? The temperatures on this planet fluctuate dangerously. Everything has evolved to kill humans. Together, we will survive. I hear something. I'm tracking a life form moving toward you. 50 meters. 20. 10. It has found you. We must abort this mission. You wouldn't give any other ranger that order. You are not a ranger. You are my son. Remember, danger is very real. But fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. So the big thing that I see here out of uh, in that trailer is setting Jaden up as a the next action star. Yeah. Yeah. I really see this as a platform for him to kind of break out I, of his I believe King that was roles. the intent. And and I think he may be successful in that even if the movie does fail. He on has stage. the acting chops to do it. I, uh, and that, he can clearly yeah. handle physical roles. He's right, been handling looks good. He's right. been handling physical roles since he was a kid. Well, mm-hmm. the karate kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but is Kung it, Fu Kid. Uh, Kung, Kung Fu Kid, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Whatever. So is it just me or were they talking in funny accents? Yes, they, they were. were talking in funny accents. Like, yes, they that, were funny, funny accents. Uh, it, it was distracting to me. That's my only problem with that trailer. Otherwise, that it looks the good. the post-Earth accent? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, what was that? Um, Cloud Atlas. They had that with um, Halle Berry and um, Tom Hanks and Cloud Atlas. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it was more distracting than anything else. It's very mm-hmm. difficult to develop a futuristic accent it, and not... And have it be believable without having it pull you and go, eh, what? Right. It didn't necessarily bother me. But yeah. I, again, I thought this movie looked really good. You know, but we've said this time and time again. Trailers, you really can't judge a movie by its trailer. Yeah. Well, no, I, I like the flying suit. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. The squirrel, that was suit. Nice. The squirrel, squirrel suit. Squirrel yeah. suit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I have to admit that was a pretty good looking trailer because... Mm-hmm. I just heard it was M. Night Shyamalan, and I just turned down any offers to go see it for free. So. Right. <laughs> right. Well, there it is. Well, there you go, folks. What do you think? You know the numbers. 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Send us in. Send us your comments. Let us know what you think of it, uh, what you thought of it, and uh, um, what you think maybe they could have done better or, or what they did well. Mm-hmm. You and use our nifty slice of sci-fi app. Absolutely, yes. that's what we did. All of the interviews at Phoenix Comic Con on, except for Megan, who except doesn't have Megan. an iPhone. Uh, the, so I really iPhone. messed a whole bunch of stuff up. No, you didn't. No, oh, you so didn't. Sad. It was fine. They were, you so. did great, Art. <laughs> well, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back with more right after this. Why do you think your mommy or daddy are always telling you, "Don't put that in your mouth"? Let's find out. 
Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you stop it in your face. Don't stop it in your face. Though it might look good to eat. Though it might look good to eat. And it might look good to taste. And it might look good to taste. You could get sick. Yuck. Real quick. Yuck. Real sick. Real sick. Don't you put it in your mouth. Uh-uh. Tell you ask someone you love. That's right, sis. If it's okay to eat. If it's okay to eat. Like a muffin or a beet. Like a muffin or a beet. If you don't know just what it is. Remember, boys and girls. Don't, don't put it. Always ask someone you love before you put anything in your mouth. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. Sam, you want to see Isaac Asimov's old house at 50th and Spruce in Philadelphia, so you tell me to send you pictures? Really? Send you pictures? I mean, come on. You wanted to see Germany, right? Did, did someone send you pictures of Germany? No! You went out there! I have a hide a bed Get out to Philly! That goes for all you guys. You got an open invite. Not all the listeners of the voicemail show because my apartment isn't that big, but all you guys in the studio and uh, who am I kidding? Most of the people who listen to the voicemail show too, just email me. We'll make something work. Talk to you later. Yay! <laughs> and that's why Although, he that's, that's why he's crazy, funny. Joe. Was, was he driving while he filmed that? Should yes, I be concerned? Yes, he is driving while Joe. he's filming. Uh, I Joe. can't come visit you if you're in the hospital. Oh, We're gonna have to make him film a PSA, right? Yeah, right? Slicing gonna, while hey, driving. That's why he's called Crazy Joe. <laughs> with a K. With a K. With a K. Yeah, mm-hmm. using the iPhone app while you're driving is definitely not recommended by. Slides of Sci-Fi does iPhone. not endorse it. No. We're not liable for that no, stuff. Exactly. That's your own Crazy with a K shenanigans. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Um, you know we had a lot of uh, a, vo- a lot of comments that came in this week. Yeah. And speaking of Will Smith, since we're kind of on the Will Smith subject, this one I found interesting. Okay. Hey, slicers! It's Will, aka Slice Fantasy, out of New York, and yes, I'm about to commit heresy. Okay. I robot the Will Smith movie. I am not saying it was a particularly good movie. I am saying it had more Asimov in it than you give it credit for. Oh, mm. it was then a discussion of the of the zeroist law of robotics, which is in Asimov's story, the inevitable solution, which is the last story in the iRobot collection, discusses this idea that eventually the robots are going to be so effective that they'll be guiding and directing human humans very specifically in the same way and that the idea is that they can harm a human if it's good for humanity which is exactly what the movie was exploring it just Asimov saw this as a good thing if you look at some of his later stories his really later stuff when he started merging in the robots and the foundation he actually sort of seemed to back off a little and those aren't very good he didn't he he wasn't good late in life but that's the thing is there's more Asimov in the movie (laughs) iRobot than people give it credit for it doesn't make Mm. it good does make it more than how it gets dismissed. Later. There you go. I don't hate that argument. I don't. I kind of see what he's talking I. about. I, I, I get where he's going. I do too. <laughs> and, and really, I'm I'm kind of with him. I liked the movie for the movie's sake. Mm-hmm. Um, and and whether it's called iRobot or not iRobot, I mean, it was a good action robot futuristic movie. I kind of liked some of the stuff that was going on in there. Hmm. And I've discovered the more that I watch it, the less I hate it. I have yeah. to agree. It's a it's a good film. Yeah, yeah it, I, it does kind of grow it. on you like fungus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love fungus. I, I love fungus. mushrooms. I do too. I mushrooms eat fungus. Are tasty. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff there. <laughs> So over the years, we've seen a lot of cool Lego creations, right? Star Wars mm-hmm. comes to mind as one of the genre favorites. It has characters, weapons, ships, bases, blah, 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 everything. Star Wars is Lego. So last week, the Lego wizards outdid themselves with the debut of, this is so awesome, full-scale model of an X-Wing fighter uh, is, from Star oh, yeah, Wars. This is Rock and roll. That is, thing, if you're looking at the video, is full-scale. Full-scale model Can they fit a person of in Lego. It? I can't even fathom that. Right? I wonder if, the, if... Is there a person in there? I can't see. God, I hope so. <laughs> they should totally put a person in there. there or should they be. should have a person-sized Lego person. Yeah. yeah. Well, wait. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> so, so the details, right, is 5,335,200 blocks. Wow. Okay. The weight is... 
45,979.61 pounds. Damn. That's including bricks and a steel wingspan of 44 feet. Okay. Did you? Wow. Five million Lego blocks. 44 foot wingspan. Yeah, but does it split open like an X? That's yeah. what I. Yeah. It, yeah. it should. It's it better. It's, it's based on the actual Lego. Well, that's model, something that's right? got some kind of mo- motor in there. 46,000 so. pounds. That is crazy. You, you know what that is? That is a metric assload of Legoisms. It, well, that <laughs> metric <laughs> assload. It's that, in the script. I'm reading that's it right how, now. I, I, had to I didn't do that. I'm I not responsible. That. That, is, that is 23 tons is what it is that 22 is. 22 tons, yeah. 23 tons, kids. Is that how much a real X-Wing would weigh? I don't know. Somebody's I don't think it's made of plastic, though. Somebody's wow. got an unbelievable amount of time on their hands. Right? Yeah, I, I, well, no, they just love Legos and love Star Wars. That's like fandom right there, you wow. know? Oh. So, at last report, it was shipped from Lego's headquarters in the Czech Republic to New York City. It's currently on display in Times Square and will move cross-country to Legoland California Resort. How do you move oh, that thing? Legoland. Very go back carefully. The Lego headquarters yeah. in the Czech Republic? I mean, so, that thing yeah, just Yeah, has... I didn't know that. Holy crap! You can sit in it. Yes. So if Thank you, you. That's if what you, I was asking. If you visit it, right? So if you're in you New York City, it. go sit in it, take a picture or video of yourself in the Lego X-Wing. Try Challenge. It. Challenge. Send it Challenge. Send it yeah. in. Use Challenge. the app. Use, Use the, app. the app. Take photos. Use Do whatever. The app. Use the phone. Go iPhone buy an app. iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some it's video. as good a reason as any. There you go. <laughs> we want to see Sur- people in it. Surreal. Surreal. I have a challenge for you. There's your next challenge, Surreal. There you go. Go get your self-photographed in that. Use the iPhone app and send us some video. It'll be awesome. (laughs) So it is with deep, deep and grand apologies to uh, our Slice assistant news editor, Laith Preston. He'd submitted a story and unfortunately it kind of got bumped for technical and timing reasons. So Mm -hmm. really sorry, really, really sorry, Laith. It was never, it was nothing personal. It was all Megan's fault. Yeah. Yeah, There we go. Uh So, but now at last. I didn't want it to be my fault, but it is. Once it was my fault and then it was Megan's fault. (laughs) Anyway, we have it now. We have it this week. We can show it to you now. There's an awesome web series he's been following. You want to learn all about it. It is incredible. Here you go. Hey there, Slicers. Leith Preston here. Just wanted to say a few words about the incredible comedic uh, fantasy web series Journey Quest. I recently posted a review of the DVD for Journey Quest Season 2, City of the Dead, over at the Slice of Sci-Fi website. Uh, Be sure to check that out. Um, I really can't say enough about the writing and acting and really pretty much everything about this very high-quality web series. yeah, I enjoyed the uh, season two so much I just had to go back and watch season one so I could find out just what I'd missed and boy, I would have missed out on a lot if I hadn't. Uh, great comedy, terrific writing. Anyway, uh, check out my review at the uh, Slice of Fi website and uh, take a look at this trailer for Journey Quest. not interfere. A bard's duty is to observe and record, to preserve history in song for the enlightenment and edification of future generations. We allow events to unfold naturally, organically, and do nothing to influence their outcome. Where are your pants? Oh, hmm. A mystery. <laughs> Who else disputes my rule? No, no. I'll civilize you again. No! Everywhere. No, I got rid of you. The Glorian will come and save us. Die, evil racers! This epic is compromised. No, 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 we have it. Let's all... Eat a cow! <laughs> I saw this, they're not paying me enough. Boy, I said! Sarah! 
family isn't exactly the forgive and forget type. What do you want from me? No. It's what you want from me. We have much to discuss. That looks absolutely awesome. It looks it like does. a hoot. It, it really yeah. does. It and really does. There's some so many elements of that that just it, it's going to be fun. And Fran Kranz is never bad. Yeah, he's like pretty much dollhouse. always good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's deeply awesome. Hey, can I interject? As long as we're pimping good properties. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. You've heard me talk about Orphan Black. Mm-hmm. If you if you're friends with me on Facebook, you've probably heard me talk about it a lot. But if you've regretted that you've missed it. The show is going out on Friday. Mm. Saturday, there is the um, season finale. And before that, BBC America is running a marathon of the (laughs) whole season, 10 episodes. It's really good. I've had two people today tell me they're glad I made them watch it because now they're (laughs) totally into it. One of them was hooked in episode one. The other one, like me, was hooked in episode four. Give it a chance. Minimum four episodes. If you don't love it, then you can call up and yell at me or email girlsam at sliceofsci-fi.com and tell me I suck. But you would be wrong Uh because it's so (laughs) awesome. Well, there it is. Set the DVR. I'm going to absolutely. There's there's a lot of really good stuff that's coming out uh, this just in the next few months, and mm-hmm. uh, we definitely have got to have a conversation about that I think, really soon. I think we're going to do something soon, kind of previewing what's what's coming on our TV because tons of genre goodness is coming our way. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Slicer, she's from New Jersey. 20, hour, 20 days, three hours, twenty six minutes. <laughs> yeah, um, less than that now. I yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, a friend of mine, now this is second-hand information, I didn't check this, so much, check for this myself. A friend of mine sent me a message, uh, a text message on Tuesday saying that the whole Paizo website was down because the whole company had gone to see Star Trek. <laughs> later after the movie was over. I just thought that that was great and fantastic and sounds totally something that Pathfinder Paizo would do. So, yes. uh just thought that you'd find that uh, interesting. Take care, Slicer. Awesome. Love those guys. Absolutely. This message is from Morrow of Texas to Arkel. Uh, sorry that you're losing yours. I assume it's a cell phone. But since you do have a computer, here's an alternative. It's a, just a suggestion. Try Google.voice. That's Google Voice, how yeah. I'm able yeah. to call the slice of sci-fi voice mail number thing. I'm doing it right now. Woo-hoo. And frankly, you can, it's free. You can use it anywhere in the continental United States and America, provided you've got a connection to the internet. Look it up. Go to google.com slash voice, and you get a local number or as close to you as possible. And there you go. Hopefully that'll work for you. Slice on, guys. And cheer up, Arkle. And isn't it awesome that Arkle has his own fan base that is yeah. trying yeah. to get him to call in more often? <laughs> and we know he's got an internet connection because he said he would continue to follow well, the show I, I, I on his computer. Well, I think it was occasionally on somebody else's computer. Yeah. It was his right. grandmother's. Yes. yes. Yeah, well, but he, but he still has the means he's now on. to be able to call us. He's on That's Facebook right. every day. Yeah. That's right. We miss you, Arkle. Hi, Slicers. Lawn Buddha here. And I miss Urkel already. Yes. <laughs> Here's hoping that this dry patch doesn't last too long for you and that we're soon basking in your glory once again. Keep on slicing, folks. Lawn Buddha, away! <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I just totally lawn- had a mental image of like a little Buddha statue with a cape flying. Uh, exactly. Right, that's awesome. Superman Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. Awesome stuff there. I think it's time for a uh, our, our weekly um, Suspicious Observer. Mm-hmm. I, I, I need to know what's going on in the world and universe and I'm everything curious. else. Good morning, folks. You have been watching a tornado in Milan. We'll have more on tornadoes elsewhere and come back to Euro weather. 
In just three days, ice jammed in a river bed and flooded Galena, Alaska. Good aftershot of the affected area. No major quaking in the last day. Five-pointer at Prince Edward Island is slightly out of the norm, but a 4.8 in California that came through my apps as 5.2 makes the second above average shake in that state in a few days. That tropical storm hit hurricane status just before landfall. It's weakening now, but already bringing the year's first such disaster to the American coastlines. It struck just north of Guatemala, and using the population density function on RSOE, we can see that there are significant populations in the way. Coming back to Europe, we showed the tornado, but beyond that isolated fury, the deluge and wind are widespread. When I pull the satellite feed, you should recognize a powerful northern hemisphere low pressure convergence. The sparse cloud cover here doesn't do justice to the swath encroaching from the west even to the tip of the South Island of New Zealand now. Coming back to tornadoes, this time in the United States, had a couple drop from that convergence we showed yesterday and you can bet that will happen again tonight with the low pressure firmly lined up, ripping warm air north into dry western air and cooler masses from the north. They'll work out their differences above tonight's severe watch zone. This is three straight days of gamma bursts. Yesterday from way south in the Hydrus constellation, you remember Capricornus fired one three days ago and up north in Ursa Minor yesterday. Flaring has not been able to get off the floor and, as you might imagine, the sunspots aren't looking any more impressive than the X-ray flux. Small, magnetically benign, any significant flaring today would almost certainly be Hyder style from a filament release. Coronal hole wind stream we've taken for days is almost over, speed dropping precipitously and along with this, magnetometers are quiet with plasma penetration stalling. Let's chat about Dr. Simon Atkins of the Advanced Forecasting Corporation. Sorry I missed your call last night, sir. I will call you later today. This man has forecasted a significant probability of an Atlantic Ocean tsunami. You might have heard about it. I tend to ignore most things like this, especially because someone is always chiming in when I set a quake watch, and when his began, so did mine, based on the incoming corona holes and the energetic flux in the form of a proton bombardment. But. With Dr. Atkins, I couldn't ignore it completely. He's focused on the sun, and his weather forecasting with such means is very impressive. I contacted him in an attempt to help. Now, I commented to you, many of you, that he might have eyes on the wrong ocean when around the time I called the Kamchatka area unstable, the earth was screaming out a warning. Now, luckily, it was one of the deepest eight-pointers in the history of record. Kamchatka isn't exactly New York City in terms of population density. But could we have combined to better forecast that quake? Or what about the next one, potentially in a populated area? Dr. Atkins' watch remains in effect for six more days, and the umbral field is opening again now. We have days of coronal hole geoeffectiveness ahead of us, and we have a secondary factor, energetic flux in the form of an electron storm. These usually begin to decline before the quakes begin. We also have a sign from the Earth, and it's about the North Atlantic. Yesterday's reported quake in the Irish Sea was so very underappreciated in the comments section. Earth has seen four eight magnitude quakes since their last four pointer, so how rare was it? Now, am I going to jump on board with the 81% likelihood of an Atlantic tsunami or large quake? No. But I promised someone that if my factors matched a sign underground that the North Atlantic was about to rumble, I'd say so. Promise kept. Helio viewer not updating, so you are on your own for close-ups. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. This is the most fascinating thing that we've got going on the show right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. The more incredible. that we do this every single week, the more I understand what he's talking about. It makes more sense, and it is just incredible. Incredible, it's cool the more stuff. that I more that I want to study what he's talking about and have a and then get a better understanding of the entire science that he's drawing upon. Absolutely. I just want to listen to his voice. <laughs> I, like I it. admit I'm a lurker I find it to on be his soothing. page. Yeah, yeah, I tell you what, I, I have actually gone out and and watched a lot more of this stuff because we're running this more on the show. It's just amazing. That's cool. So. Anyway, one right. last story, and we'll wrap it up for tonight. So, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Indie Starter, Kick a Go Go, whatever. You know, there's tons of like the crowdfunding. Sure. Kick a Go I like I'm that. Not one. Kicking right. a Go Go. Right? Kicking a Go Go. Sounds ah. like fun. Sounds like a nightclub. Um, so, <laughs> I 
I've backed a few projects myself, right? These fundraisers have mostly been used for vanity properties like artwork, music, book, films, web series, etc. Well, we found one that is like solely in the interest of science. And, and, and we think on the backs is, of uh, on the back right? of Skywatch, it's perfect. Right? <laughs> Synchronicity. It's called ARCID Space Telescope. Mm-hmm. Instead of dishing out your hard-earned dollars for an ego project that only helps an artist, director, or writer make their personal dreams come true, why not put your monies toward a science project that makes the heavens above available to the public? Yes. Planetary Resources, a private venture aiming to mine near-Earth space rocks for water, minerals, and other resources, announced on May 29th that it would build and launch a space telescope for public use if it could raise at least $1 million Mm -hmm. in 33 days. Good grief. Well, I tell you what, this is cool stuff, and we'll talk about it after Mm -hmm. the story, but... So far, they raised more than one hundred and sixty thousand dollars on the first day of its campaign. That's hey, huge. Hey, hey. The telescope hey, hey, hey. will be hey. a twin copy of the Arcid spacecraft the company is developing to detect, track, and study asteroids in preparation for its mining mission. A test version of the spacecraft is set up for its maiden trial flight in April 2014, while the crowdfunded model would launch in early 2015. Wow. That is yeah. So, cool. so next time you take money from your wallet and put it in somebody else's wallet, why not consider placing that same moolah into space exploration for public consumption that will help mankind and the minds of generations to the come? Coolest, I mean, I know we all want Firefly back, but this is pretty cool. I right? agree. The <laughs> coolest thing about this story, and the one thing that I absolutely love, is that this is not for just them mining asteroids it mm-hmm. is uh, it goes to the public yeah you we have the ability to use it it's going to be open to schools universities it's going to be u- mm-hmm. open for teaching mm-hmm. it's going to be open for whoever wants to use it Which, unlike I, the nasa right. satellite the, right. the, the nasa mm-hmm. telescope that you have to know somebody and have millions and get funding and permission and this is a public Which thing is super exciting like just coming from somebody who works in a public school I've been in science classes where they're teaching about the Hubble, and how cool would it be for those kids to be able to, I don't know, log onto the internet? I don't know what they're planning, but well, to actually be able to use a telescope you could that's actually already use in it. space. So it's like, okay, kids, where do you want? What do you want exactly. to look at in space? Exactly. And they, uh, they as a class, figure out a point in space that they want to look at. They use the telescope, get that shot, bring it back into the classroom. How cool is this for education mm-hmm. and getting kids excited about science again? And this is taking science just one step further. It's not about just reading something in some old textbook. Now they are actively involved in the scientific Hands research. On. They're doing it. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, awesome I'm, stuff. I'm Super curious cool. about what happens cool. when a whole bunch of people want to use it at the same time. Well, I'm sure it's going to get very Rochambeau. busy. Big, yeah. big Rochambeau tournament. Just on Skype for scissors. You know, it's, it actually opens Rock, paper, the question. Scissors, you know, scissors, if it gets really, really popular, is there a second telescope maybe? Ooh. Or maybe a different type of telescope. One that is focused primarily just at the sun. Hmm. Or one that's focused mm-hmm. primarily just at Mars and is just used for Mars research. This opens up so much for private space. And private space is huge right now. Yep. And there's so much exciting, exciting things happening coming. From and also planet. new gossip news I read today. Elon Musk is dating Cameron Diaz. And <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Segwayed right into that space news. You know. I tell you what. Uh, Elon is my personal hero. There you I go. love that man. <laughs> and on that point, <laughs> and on that, I think we'll call this a show. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. You know where to find us. We're on the Facebooks. We're on the Twitters. We're uh, SliceSciFi.com, SliceSciFi.tv. If you want to know more about this or you have comments about it, definitely use our Facebook, uh, our, our iPhone app and send us in comments or use the voicemail line and send us your thoughts on all the stories that you heard tonight. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back with more in just a couple days.